Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man's going to be fighting at UFC on Fox 31 come Saturday night, December the 15th. It'll be the featured prelim on FS1. It's Zach Otto. Zach, I appreciate the time. Of course, last time we talked, you mentioned about how this was kind of get me on this Milwaukee card. So uh, I am have to imagine when your manager called you and said, hey, we, we've got Milwaukee. You were ecstatic. Yeah, for sure. Um there was only one Walter Wade fight put together on the card, and it wasn't me. So I was a little disappointed in that. I um, was probably thinking I was going to be back sometime early 2019. Um, but I, I did want to stay ready just because it's right in my own backyard, and there was a Walter Wade matchup. Um, Eric Koch uh, has kind of been, you know, a little injury prone in recent years, and coming up at 170, which was different for him, I thought uh, maybe there's a possibility there that that fight doesn't quite work out so i should probably stay ready uh just in case and uh so i I was you know training hard at the gym um keeping my weight down a little bit stuff like that just in case something happened or so that i could take a fight in early 2019 and and, you know jump right into a good training camp and uh yeah last week my manager called me and he was like all right you called it uh, Coke got hurt, so you're you're in, man. So I was pretty ecstatic about it. It's pretty cool, pretty cool opportunity. What what would you say is the biggest advantage of taking a short nose fight? Uh, well, for me, it's because I'm always in the gym, anyways. So uh, with coaching and all that, and uh, I stay up on my strength and conditioning, and so I'm I'm always in pretty good shape, and I, I'm I'm never rusty. So usually if I have a long training camp, eight, 10 weeks, something like that, it's like, it weighs on you mentally, you know, over time and you can only eat so clean for so long. And anytime you have a piece of cake, you feel guilty or, you know what I mean? I'm always thinking about, Oh, what my, what's my opponent doing right now that I'm not doing. And it's just a lot of little things that you nitpick and stuff over a long training camp. So I kind of like it, you know, I'm in, I'm in good shape. So when I got the call, I just got to get my weight down a little bit more, get, uh, you know, fix some things and stuff like that. That's kind of specific for this guy. And then go in there and just get it done and over with here. I didn't, I thought I'd probably be missing my Christmas or new year's with a training camp. And then now I'm going to get it all done and over with, and I'll get to enjoy those holidays coming up here. So. And you're taking on a guy making his UFC debut. Um, some people may say he's already technically had that that UFC debut with the Contender Series, but this is a different animal. I mean, you're going essentially from, let's call it what it is, a gym fight into the stage that obviously you have been on. He's won seven in a row. Um, you know, his only loss came in a second pro fight. Like when when you you know started kind of diving into him as a fighter, what like what jumped out to you? Uh, pretty athletic guy. He's got good power in his hands, especially his right hand, but there isn't really a whole lot of film on him. Um, a lot of the guys he's fought are uh, seem like other stand up fighters that just seem content to kind of stand right in front of him or come at him. And he's a, he's a counter striker. Uh, he doesn't come forward with a lot of volume or anything like that. He just, uh, you know, looking to time that right hand and he's put people down with it. So it's something I have to definitely be careful about. But um, yeah, there just really isn't a whole lot of tape on this guy, which is so different than everybody else I fought. You know, uh, everybody else in the UFC I fought has way more UFC experience than me. Um, and now this is the first time where the kind of the roles are reversed. So it's kind of bringing me back to when I was on the regional level and I'm trying to fight another guy with a good record to get myself you know, ahead in the regional rankings to try to get signed by a big organization. And uh, it kind of just takes me back to those times. Um, not a lot of tape. So uh, luckily enough, I think I'm well-rounded and uh, I can go in there and figure this guy out. I think that's one of the best things that I'm, I'm good at. It's, it's like I think coaching and stuff helps me with that. Um, I can usually pick up on people and I'm going to try to find out where we have the biggest um, difference in skill set and uh, take them there when you were in Vegas for the ultimate fighter finale, where you kind of getting that itch being a coach and being in the back and like, man, man, I wish tonight was my night to fight. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good experiences to going through that and, and do it yourself. Um, you know, going through the walkout and all that just two weeks before I'm about to do it myself. It really helps keep everything real comfortable. 
some people that don't coach and then they go a, a period of time without fighting. That's got to, there's got to be some uh, rustiness and all the unknowns and stuff like that can kind of play a factor. So it, it, it all feels very natural to me and comfortable. I do it all the time. It, it mentioned about how there, there's not a lot of film out there on Dwight. And it, it, it seems like more and more I hear from fire say, you know what? I, I just don't watch a lot of film. My opponent. Yes. I'll, you know, I'll get the information, but I've got to worry about myself. I mean, have you ever found yourself throughout your career or maybe you, you worry too much about your opponent's abilities and you kind of, you didn't concentrate on yourself? Uh, yes and no. Um, I, I think game planning for a very specific game plan is kind of the downfall, the, the thing that I got away from. Uh, Cause once you're in there, it's a fight and, things have went completely opposite than the way that I thought they would have went. So as far as like a specific game plan, I don't really follow anymore. But um, as far as certain tendencies and techniques that my opponent does, I definitely need to be looking out for it. You know, for example, if a guy has got a, a wicked guillotine and you go all camp saying, oh no, I got to worry about myself and you barely practice guillotines or as much as you normally do, you know, that's something that you got to be specifically really prepared for. So if, if a person has a, a certain tendency, you got to address that. You got to make sure you're repping that out in practice. But as far as going in with a specific game plan, that normally doesn't work out. How much does your opponent's abilities and what they do well kind of alter, you know, how much you do jujitsu, how much you do wrestling, and how much you do striking in terms of preparing for a fight? Yeah. Um, I think you kind of, you need to still touch on everything. Like I said, cause you never really know where the fight's going to go. And then, um, you need to address those tendencies that, you know, you think is going to most likely happen in the fight. I feel, you know, they always talk about those UFC jitters, you know, when you, when you have your first fight, you know, first fight under, under the big lights, but for you being the guy that's now been there six times, taking on a guy, this is his first time. How do you take advantage of that? I think it's a, a great feather in my cap, um, I, especially being at home, which is really great. Uh, there's been so many times where I've went on the other side of the world to fight a more experienced person in their backyard. And, you know, it, it it's something that you have to overcome uh, during the fight. And so uh, I finally get a chance for it to be on my side and uh, – I think it just every it, it really helps make the moment feel right. And when everything feels right, it helps give you that confidence. And a lot of this is about confidence. You know, I know I got the skills uh, to beat this guy and uh, I just got to go in there and execute. And all those good feelings help give me that, that good confidence. Fighting at home. Some guys love it. Some guys hate it uh, for you. I mean, you know, what, what's, what's kind of, is it more just, you're just excited to fight in front of the hometown. I, 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 for people that know me, they know I'm, I'm a huge Wisconsin person. Um, you know, born and raised in Milwaukee. And, uh, I, I really have a lot of pride about my city and my state and to be back here after a long time of traveling around is really, it means something to me. Um, I really want to put on a great show for the fans. Um, Milwaukee is one of those cities where it's, it's a big city, but it's not too big. So you really get a chance to know people and, um, just from either running the gym or, or fighting and stuff like that. Um, uh, being here, being around here my whole life, I worked in the service industry for years. So, uh, I'm excited for everybody to come out and enjoy the new arena that we got in Milwaukee and watch some kick-ass fights. Now, for fans who maybe are going to be coming into Milwaukee that weekend to watch the UFC fights, they're not from Milwaukee, they're not from Wisconsin, is there kind of one or two things they've got to do while they're in town? Uh, <laughs> we're known for you know drinking beer and eating sausage and cheese and stuff. So if you get your hands on any cheese curds, I'd, I'd do that. Uh, a lot of restaurants uh, have them. Uh, stay away from the chain places, of course, wherever you go, always – try and get the, the mom and pop places and then uh, go on some brewery tours. Uh, we got great brewery tours uh, in Milwaukee lakefront brewery, uh, hit them up over the weekend, and get some good taste in beer. I know I am as soon as I win this fight. So 
is there is it kind of like do you have that that mindset of like okay Sunday afternoon we're celebrating the victory I'm going to this brewery to get this beer like is there is there already a item list set oh I I have I have a full list usually of of what places I want to go eat and you know have some drinks and stuff um this is a now a short intense training camp so it hasn't weighed on me quite yet I'm sure over the next week I'm going to be you know, put my list together here and, and find out what I want to do. So I just got the fight off to think about it a little bit. Uh, but I do have some friends and family coming in from out of town to come watch the fight. Uh, I got friends coming from all over the place. So um, it should be a pretty fun Saturday night. And, of course, everyone's going to be able to check this out as the feature prelim on FS1 UFC on Fox 31. The, early, the TV prelims will start at 5 p.m. each time. And, of course, your four-fight main card on Fox at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Zach, as always, man, I appreciate time. Let everyone know they can find you on social media and also uh, any of those sponsors that help support you. Yeah, cool. Uh, you can find me on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, just under my name, Zach Otter. And then on Twitter, I have a handle, at the Barbarian MMA. Um, Want to throw a shout-out to my team, Poor Vita, BJJ, and MMA right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, a lot of up-and-comers. Uh, Leah Letson just got a big win this last weekend, so... We're killing it right after me. Montel Jackson's fighting at the end of the uh, the month in December uh, out in Vegas. So uh, just wishing luck to him and everybody else that we got coming up with fights. Um, and then I just got some Quest Nutrition bars and protein. So I want to throw a big shout out to them. Uh, they're always hooking me up with supplements and, and energy and protein bars and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot, Jason. Thanks for having me on. Always good talking to you.